I'm Brian Nash from How We Got Here Genealogy, and this is the first of my series on the genealogy of Canadian Prime Ministers. We are going to be looking at the first Prime Minister, Sir John A. Macdonald. Before I begin, if you're wanting to know a little bit about his history as Prime Minister, I have created a separate video which I will link at the end of this, um, this video that just goes over the highlights and the lowlights of his term as Prime Minister. So, as this is more about his genealogy than his history, we're going to go and look at this through a, from a genealogy perspective. I do have to thank the people at the Canada Project and Wikitree. They've done a great project they worked on recently was the Prime Ministers of Canada and developing their genealogy. This is where I'm getting all my base information from because I can trust the people at Wikitree, specifically the people on and the Canada Project who I've worked with for a while um, on their accuracy. And the great thing is a lot of this information is recorded because they are historical figures. So let's dig in. Um, I'm going to show a couple of tools here. That um, The first one is one I use regularly. It's um, when I do my online recording of family trees, I like to use um, MyHeritage. One of the reasons is um, I I really like the the package that they have for subscriptions and the information that's available. Um, so that's one of the tools that I will be using and I'll sh be showing today. In fact, I'm developing all the um, Canadian Prime Ministers into one database um, using the tool. Uh, it's their actually their desktop tool called Family tree builder. I, I really like it. It's enjoyable. So I'm, I'm going to sort of start by showing you that here. Okay, so with family tree builder, as you can see, this here is, I, I do, one of the things I like about the um, desktop using this for my heritage is the way it actually builds out the tree when you're working on it. It's quite simple. You set it up and it's sort of as a family tree you can go through. So we're going to start with Johnny McDonald himself. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this other little tool. What I'm using here is Google Earth. This is their desktop version. Uh, it's really great. I have some. It, it has some great functions that allow me to um, set places up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the birthplace of um, Sir Johnny Macdonald. So we're going to go and go from um, where I am in right now in. Prince Edward Island, we're gonna to go to Glasgow, Scotland. And as you see, we're flying over and we're going to 20 Brunswick Street. This is giving, gonna give you an idea of what it looks like now. This is the um, birthplace of Sir John A. Macdonald. He was born in um, 20 Brunswick Street. It's a lane, actually, where he was built. It was recently um, torn down, uh, unfortunately, was not marked as a historic land site in Scotland. I do, however, have this image um, from later in the 1800s of the building itself, as well as I have this great tool from um, the National Library of Scotland. We are actually able to take and overlay a map of from that that error so we actually see sort of a few things here um, so let's zoom in so we're looking at this area right here um, around Brunswick Street since we can't visit the place ourselves I have the next best thing this is a video from 1967 um, in celebration of the 100th anniversary of Confederation uh, it features um, Hugh Alexander George MacDonald Gainsford who was Sir John A's great-grandson. He explains a little bit about uh, John A's birthplace and also um, the early history of Sir John A and his family. To find out uh, where my grandfather had been born, we checked the records and found that he had been born in a three-story brick building in a narrow uh, alley in central Glasgow here in Brunswick Street. The, the building was there all right, but uh, there's no plaque or anything to indicate that a great Canadian had been born here. Uh, by coincidence, there's a pet shop in the building 
and the owner's name is McDonald. Here on the top floor of this building, on January the 11th, 1815, John Alexander McDonald was born. I came here to start my apprenticeship as an electrical engineer in 1917 at the age of 14 years of age. Uh, I have been here for 50 years come October this year, and to my knowledge, I understand that Sir John McDonald was born in this building. This building, I would think, would be built about eight, 1780, and as far as my knowledge is concerned of Sir John MacDonald, he would be born here in this building uh, about 18, uh, 1815, which, if my recollection is right, was the time of the Battle of Waterloo. In John A. MacDonald's time, I would think the population of Glasgow would be something 8,000 to 10,000 people. And so far as the city was concerned, it consisted of about eight streets, Strangate High Street, Glasgow Cross, uh, Rotten Row, etc. And from where Johnny MacDonald stayed or lived, the edge of the city would be roughly about 200 yards. Craig, it's rather funny that the main floor of his birthplace should be turned into what it is today. Do you, um, do you find it kind of ironic, Hugh, that uh, your great-grandfather's, the lower part of his former home where he was born, uh, is now a pub in Scotland? Yeah. Well, I, I wouldn't say that I find it ironic so much as the fact that I, I couldn't help but thinking that if uh, it's true, if it's, as people say, he, yeah. Sir John drank a fair amount, that he might find it rather humorous mm -hmm. and very convenient uh, to find that this cups. pub two red uh, oh, was right handy at his handle. Thank you. The Scottish national team the, won the national Wembley team. today, you know. Yeah. So when we're looking at the family tree here, we'll see, um, again, as I showed you, his birthplace in um, Scotland, 20 Brunswick Street in Glasgow, Scotland. And we have his parents, Hugh and Helen Shaw. Like I said, one of the really things I like about this particular program is it lets us, it sets it up like a um, family tree. So we can move to his father. Uh, when we look at his father, what it does is it brings his father, his wife, um, their parents, and all their children down here. You're going to notice that a lot of these names as we go through here, um, particularly on the McDonald side, um, there's a tradition in Scotland of naming uh, children. Usually the first son would be named after yourself or some variation thereof. In this case, we have Hugh McDonald. His first son is William Hugh McDonald. So let's just take a quick quick look at William Hugh. So this is what we know about him. He was born before 1813 and he died before 1820. Um, the reason we know that he died before 1820, when we actually look at the records of their immigration, he was not listed amongst the children. So they then had a daughter. Um, now, naming of daughters is very similar. Uh, your first daughter would often be named after the wife's mother. So the wife, we have um, Margaret and Margaret McDonald. We have her husband, James Williamson. So let's just go back to Hugh and Helen, uh, Hugh McDonald and Helen Shaw. And we will notice that Helen's mother was named Margaret. Uh, again, you're going to see this name very common um, as we look down through the uh, generations. Um, so their next child was John Alexander MacDonald. That's Sir John A. Uh, we've already looked at this. We have his, his wife's information. So let's just go back to you. And as we're going to come back to here, one of the things um, I do want you to know Actually, when we look at Margaret, you'll see that I do have an image of her. Um, she did come to Canada with her family, and she actually had a really important role in the life of, um, of, of, of Sir John A. She helped care for his children uh, later in life. The next uh, youngest that we have is um, James Shaw and uh, James Shaw MacDonald. So let's go back and we're going to look at Hugh and his wife and we will notice that this 
the third son is named after the the father of the mother so James Shaw is the father of the mother and we have a James Shaw McDonald often um, the mother's main name would be included with that son as well um, these are not uncommon things and then there was a daughter Louisa Jean McDonald um, so we do have a Jean McDonald as the mother of Hugh McDonald because the next daughter would be named after the father's mother this is a kind of tradition um, that you will see happen quite often in Scottish families um, I, th I go through my own Scottish line it's it's very common uh, that you will see this until really I want to say um, my grandfather's gener generation that had been in Canada um, for a few generations by that point uh, so it became less pronounced and and common to see um, so let's look at you we do know very little bit about his early life um, we know that his family was um, from Sutherland County and they had he had moved to Glasgow um, he was a not so successful businessman um, one of the reasons he wound up going to um, Kingston Ontario in 1820 and moving his family there he was hoping to have better um, better chances and uh, better luck uh, as a businessman um, so what we know about him and again this is the information that I originally got from WikiTree we have his father John McDonald and his mother Jean McDonald um, on the wiki tree we had no nothing we didn't have a maiden name and we had very little information so this is where we can start looking at some of these hints and records and see what we have matching up to see if we can find find things but what I like to do is actually go back and make sure we're looking at the right people and so when we look at his parents we also see that besides you they have a son Donald um, just remember that name because I'm going to show you something and now as we go back to um, Sir John A we're going to sort of look at the actual records that we have for those individuals um, so with Sir John A I'm when we start looking at people one of the first things to, to look at is their birth certificate let's so let's see what we can find out uh, about a birth certificate versus Sir John A So this is a record I've gotten from the Scotland's people, which is the website where you can get the records that the National Records of Scotland are stored on. It's really great, easy to use. Um, I've talked about it before in other videos, and I really recommend it. Um, so couple interesting things here that I noticed about this this here is actually from Glasgow from 1815 um, so we're gonna notice this is just taken from church records because at that point there wasn't a government record and uh, births so um, let's look here and this is what I've noticed when I look at, the, at this and a few other records from Scotland's people and elsewhere uh, for jo Sir John A at that time in his family um, you're going to notice when we zoom in uh, here that his last name was not spelled as we traditionally spell it here in Canada. In Canada, we spell Sir John A. Macdonald's name M A C, Donald. Uh, so a Mac as opposed to a Mick. Um, there was a change at some point. I'm not sure the ex exact reason, uh, but it, it's an interesting to note. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple things in, in a minute uh, about John A's later life and we'll see that at an early age he did start spelling it M-A-C. So what we have here, if we look at it, is it lists his father's name, Hugh McDonald. He was an agent. Um, doesn't sound uh, really exciting. Um, that just meant he was a, um, a merchant or a businessman. Um, he was representing another companies. Um, so 
when we look at them, we're going to sort of see what else we have there. So we have um, his wife's name, Helen Shaw, um, and it was their son, John Alexander. He was born the 10th of January. This is um, something that's a little bit of a, a controversy when you talk about Jane, John A. McDonald's birth um, because his father has a, a diary entry announcing the birth of his son on January 11th. It is presumed that is just he was recalling the day before his birth. You'll notice there's a witness, um, Donald and James McDonald. Uh, remember I mentioned that um, when we were looking at Sir John A.'s um, grandfather that he had a son besides you named Donald. So when we go back to Sir John A, again, we have his parents, um, Hugh and Helen. So let's just check. We found them in the birth records, so let's see what records we have on them. This is likewise a church record. This comes from Glasgow on the 20th of October, 1811, when this was recorded. So let's see what we have here. Again, we have McDonald, spelled MC. So we have Hugh McDonald. He was a clerk, Glasgow. And we have Helen Shaw, who was dated for the 21st of October. And it was by Miss, Mr. David Carmen. He is a minister of the New Gaelic Chapel in Glasgow. Johnny's parents, Hugh and Helen, were married in Glasgow in 1811. Uh, his father was a very restless, unstable type of person. He did very poorly in business. And uh, as uh, most of the people in Sutherlandshire were forced off their land. They eventually came to settle in the city. Let's find out what we can find about this Gaelic chapel. To understand a little bit about the church that they um, were married at, uh, why I can't find an exact record of this new Gaelic chapel, what, based on the date and what um, I'm seeing, it is most likely a church that was opened on Duke Street in Glasgow in 1798. This was a Church of Scotland. Um, during the, t the time, there was a, actually a, a number of uh, different sects of the Church of Scotland. Um, and to get into a whole, um, whole study of uh, Scottish his church history to understand it, this being the a New Light Church, it seems that this would be the Gaelic Chapel that they're talking about since the aren't referring to a church um, name. Um, so this I'm assuming is the church, uh, the chapel which was opened in 1798 because that would have been new uh, to that point because there had been a previous chapel um, on Ingram Street in 1770. Getting back to the family tree is about John McDonald and Jean McDonald, the parents of Hugh McDonald. Uh, we're gonna go back to Hugh McDonald we're going to look at his wife, Helen Shaw, and we're going to just go to, to her and see what we have. We have her parents, James Shaw and Margaret Theodore Grant. So James Shaw, there's no, um, no father, no mother, um, as well as Mary Theodore Grant. Let's take a back, look back at our family tree, and we're going to go back to Helen. So we're going to go to Helen Shaw, and then we're going to follow and John A. Down. So we have John A. McDonald. Um, so again, we, we had his birth record. There is actually something neat I kind of want to show you. It's a website uh, about a math book. Now, math books aren't usually something that you see in um, in genealogy, but this is an interesting record. This is uh, at available at the from the library the canadian national library and archives uh this is a map book of sir johnny mcdonald 1827 when sir johnny was 12. this is january 13th so it's shortly after his birthday actually um so when he was 10 he started to go to um it's called midland district grammar school in kingston and he his formal school ending when he was 15. so this is a book from that time really interesting that we have this one of the things i find interesting here um, again, I'm not a I'm not a math geek. I'm a history and genealogy uh, nerd, but it has a lot of interesting facts about math. And from a historical perspective, um, seeing the way they would have taught it, I do find interesting. 
um, but I'm again I'm not a, a math nerd there's lots of neat little things in here um, one of the things I found interesting was as a student he did what many of us would have done and that's doodle it's actually Sir John A. McDonald was known for uh, doodling on pieces of paper he had doodled uh, things pre Federation the Quebec conference and this is um, one from his early childhood in the back of a math book it, it really helps to relate to him that he just like um, any child of today would have doodled in his um, school books I'm, I'm just wondering if his teachers or his mum would have got mad at him I'm sure they did there's a little bit about Sir John A's life um, when he was younger we know at age 15 uh, which would have been in 1830 he decided to become a lawyer and he started to uh, apprentice one of the reasons he needed to to apprentice was again as I mentioned earlier his father was not a good businessman <laughs> basically he he was apprenticing and making money um, in fact it is recorded in a biography by Donald Creighton that he, he stated he had no buy boyhood he complained many years later that from the age of 15 he began to have to earn a living in 1834 so that's just seven years after the 12 year old McDonald was doodling in his math books um, he passed the bar uh, set by the Law Society of Upper Canada um, there was no law schools at that time so basically students were examined when beginning and end their, ending their um, their career uh, in between the two ex exams they were apprenticed and the article to become lawyer so between the ages of 14, 15 and 19 he he studied and passed the bar during the 1830s there was a lot of political tension in upper and lower Canada uh, in 1837 there was what was called the upper Canada rebellions Sir John A was as all males between the age of 18 and 6 they were part of the militia um, and they were called into active duty and McDonald was a private in the third Frontenac militia patrolling the area around Kingston but there wasn't really any thing happening with the rebellion in Kingston um, so he, he didn't see any action but he did serve as a soldier so um, that is an interesting uh, fact Joseph Pope was Sir John A. Macdonald's private secretary and Sir John A. had accounted, recounted his experience he, he mentioned that he um, carried a musket in 37 and he, he talked about uh, a long march his company had made uh, what he had to say about it the day was hot my feet were blistered I was but a weary boy he said and I thought I should have dropped under the weight of the old flint musket which galled my shoulder but I managed to keep up with my companions a grim old soldier who de seemed impervious to fatigue after these rebellions what happened is that the people that were involved many of them went on trial um, most of the trials happened in Toronto but Sir, uh, Sir John A or um, I guess at this point he was still just John McDonald um, he represented one of the defendants uh, that was to take place in Kingston uh, all the defendants were acquitted and a local paper described McDonald as one of the youngest barristers in the province who's rapidly rising in his profession so in 1838 McDonald was asked to advise um, one of the group of soldiers of American Raiders who had crossed the border to liberate Canada from what they saw as a yoke of British colonial oppression um, the invaders had been captured in the, after the battle um, of win, the windmill during near Prescott in Ontario because they were accused of mutilating the body of a dead Canadian lieutenant um, so McDonald could not represent the prisoners as they were tried by a court-martial um, and so as a civilian lawyer he had no standing in a military court but he was hired by um, relatives of Daniel George the paymaster of the ill-fated invasion to advise uh, advise him and because they had to conduct their own defense this uh, Daniel George was convicted and hanged um, 
But by 1838, Macdonald's position was secure. He was a public figure and a popular young man and had become a senior lawyer, which is why they had um, asked him to advise. Um, so Macdonald continued to expand his uh, law practice and he, he spent some time in England and he, he met his first uh, cousin. In the meantime, I want to remind you to like this video and subscribe and hit that notification button there so that you'll um, continue to be uh, informed when new videos come out. As I mentioned, uh, John A. Met, married his first cousin, Isabella Clark, and she was from Inverness, Scotland, and they had two children. They had John Alexander MacDonald and Hugh John MacDonald. We're going to come back to those two children in a second. Um, just want to note that John Alexander McDonald Jr., um, he lived one year, died in infancy, so there would be no offspring of his. Uh, also, just note the, uh, as I mentioned before, the naming convention of Scottish families, with the first son being named after yourself, and the second son being named after your father's, the, the father's father. So, we have Hugh McDonald, John A.'s father, and Hugh John McDonald. So, Sir John A., his first wife, um, Isabella, she died in 1857. This was something that did grieve um, Sir John A. for a lot of his life, um, but he did wind up getting married again. So he married um, Susan Agnes Bernard. Uh, they wound up actually getting married during the l period when he was in um, England f for the um, London Conference before Confederation. So they were married in 1867. Um, she lived until 1920. They had one daughter, um, Mary Theodora McDonald. Again, um, I don't have any records of her parents I, because I wasn't specifically research, researching her tree, but um, I would assume it being uh, that her family was from uh, Scotland, they would have used the same naming conventions. Um, now, Margaret Mary Mac, um, Theodora McDonald, uh, she was just more known as um, Mary. She was born and lived all her life with uh, mental and physical difficulties. She had no offspring, so um, from a family tree perspective, we're not going to spend any time with her. Just I do want to say that the issues with her health is something that affected Sir John A. as well. Uh, again, both his first wife and his his daughters from his second wife um, had many health issues which um, some said led to a lot of his um, drinking bouts which he was well known for. So when we follow the tree we're going to go back to his first wife uh, Isabella Clark. As I mentioned they had two sons the first one died in infancy and then so we're going to look at the second one who did have offspring um he wound up being a part of canadian history because he was a member of parliament a federal cabinet minister but he was also premier of uh, manitoba he had two wives he had mary jane agnes murray who they had one daughter isabel mary daisy mcdonald and he also had a wife named agnes Gertrude um, Van Conant. Um She wound up dying in 1940. Uh, this was his second wife. They had a son, John Alexander McDonald. Doesn't that name sound familiar? Um, again, looking at the naming conventions of, uh, of Scottish people, we would expect that um, Hugh would have a John Alexander of his own. Um, so we're going to quickly look at his son. Um, so his son, uh, John Alexander uh, MacDonald, he, he would be grandson of Sir John A. He was born in 1884 and died in 1905. And when he was 21, he was ill most of his life. He did attend the University of Manitoba, but he died in 1905. So there's no offspring um, to speak of from him. So we're going back to Hugh John and we're going to look at 
his first wife and their son again, their daughter. So their, they had a daughter, his first wife, um, who was Isabella Mary Daisy McDonald. Uh, she was born in 1877. She was born in Kingston because um, Hugh John lived in Kingston still at that point, uh, just 10 years after Confederation. And she died in 1959. She was married to George Kelvin Gainsford, and they had two sons. Um, now, Isabella, it was uh, quite interesting in her own right. So she was known as da Daisy, and um, she was quite active. She was in the fencing, uh, she was in the pistol shooting, and uh, she, not only was she athletic, but she was also um, into music and theater. Uh, she played the harp and the piano. And in 1900, she was involved in a show put on by the Soldiers' Wives um, at the Winnipeg Theater. In 1915, she was married to George Gainsford at St. Mary's Presbyterian Church. She died in 1959 and is buried at St. John's Cathedral Cemetery in Winnipeg. So at this point, all of Sir Johnny's grandchildren had been born, and we're going to wrap up the last little part of his own personal uh, genealogical um, records. We're going to just talk about his death. So Sir Johnny died on June 6, um, 1891. He was not only the um, a father of Confederation and the first Prime Minister of Canada, he was the um, second longest serving Prime Minister ever and he had accomplished a lot in his role as Prime Minister. He had created the Northwest Mounted Police which would later become the RCMP. He expanded Canada by annexing the Northwest Territory, Rupert's Land, British Columbia and Prince Edward Island. Uh, seven provinces joined Confederation under his leadership as Prime Minister and he saw the completion of the Canadian Pacific Railway. The Transcontinental Railway he created was one of the highlights of his career, but it was also responsible for one of the um, biggest letdowns in his career, so to speak. In 1873, he had resigned as Prime Minister due to a, a scandal um, in which his party had taken bribes from businessmen seeking contracts to complete the railway. He was re-elected in 1878, and he served from then until 1891. And he did, like I said, he did get to see that railway eventually completed. Um, there are other things that Sir Johnny is known for. Again, I have this video that I'm going to be linking at the end of this that will just give a, a brief outline of the his career. So let's get back to see who comes after his grandchildren. They had two children, Hugh Alexander, um, George MacDonald Gainsford, quite the quite the handle, and Lionel Harold Gainsford. So we're going to look at Lionel Harold. Lionel was born in 1921. He was the, the second son, and he passed away in 1963. We're going to look at Hugh Alexander, George MacDonald Gainsford. A couple things we're going to look at, as I mentioned, um, is around this time, the same as my grandfather's time, that the naming conventions sort of um, sort of changed where Scottish people wouldn't necessarily um, follow the, some of the strict, I want to say protocol or rules, um, but just more of the traditions that they had. They would include um, family names, definitely. Um, so if it had been like previous generations, he would have been a George, um, but he had Hugh Alexander, and again, his mother's maiden name is in there, which is a common thing that um, Scottish people would name the, put their, the white, the mother's maiden name in their son's names as a, as a middle name. So Hugh Alexander George MacDonald, if you notice the picture there, you, you might recognize him from that video. Um, he was married to Beatrice Mary Parr, and he was born in 19, uh, 1918 in Winnipeg. He died in November 25th, 2014 in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Um, and I'm going to end sort of John A. McDonald's genealogy here. One of the things 
I bet when you do genealogy, you do run into uh, some brick walls sometimes when you start getting it into um, people that are that could be currently living. And this is sort of the case on um, Hugh Alexander, uh, that any children or grandchildren or great grandchildren at this point, uh, the records just aren't there. They're not available. Um, the other thing is just we being cognizant of um, and respectful of those people that might be alive and not disclosing private information, which is one of the reasons I'm not digging more deeper into him on this video. But if you are related, um, you know, and you want to be included, add a comment. I would love to, to hear from you and I'd love to, to get together and talk to you about your family's uh, experience and recollection of being part of John A. McDonald family. I'm going to leave the last word up to Hugh McDonald as he talks about ref and reflects upon his grand great grandfather's um, career and place in history and how to to judge him. As Sir John A. has come into some controversy re more recently, I think this is a very important as we keep figures like this and remember the, them historically and in perspective. Do you feel that it's your duty, if you like, to protect John A.'s reputation uh, as his only living ancestor? I, I wouldn't say that I felt a duty to protect his reputation because I think his reputation is, uh, uh, is something that should be measured in what he accomplished and what he did for the country. And uh, if you're going to judge a man on his bad qualities and ignore his good qualities, uh, this is a pretty bad uh, state of affairs. And I think that uh, when a man can take uh, from nothing and work from uh, work up from nothing into a lawyer, uh, a member of uh, parliament, to uh, manage to weld people of different racial, uh, religious groups together into making a country, uh, I think he's permitted to have had a few bad points.